Hello, my name is Keith Simpson and in this short video I'm going to talk to you about the small animal ventilator, the SAV-04. Now the SAV-04 is a very simple ventilator. It was designed, or original concept was designed back in 1994 and really since that point it hasn't changed in uh, appearance or behaviour since then very much at all. There have been a few variations, uh, the most common one being the SAV-03 and now with the, we have the SAV-04. So what is an SAV-04? What does it do? What can it do? What are its limitations? That's some of the things we're just going to cover briefly now. It's a very, very simple ventilator, the SAV-04. If you consider the, the concept of ventilating an animal on a T-piece, your procedure would be to, as in here, just to take the, the tube, occlude it, let it fill with gas, and then squeeze and apply pressure to your patient. And, and that's, you know, that's how we typically we would ventilate an animal that's on a T-piece. What we're doing there really is just occluding the gas flow and then pushing gas into the patient. Now we can do that in an automated manner if we employ a special T-piece, which is what we have here, within which we have a solenoid. So the incoming fresh gas is, well actually it's coming in here, and then it will pass up here and out through here um, through the exhaust pipe in the normal way. If we close the valve off between here and here, then the gas can't flow into the expiratory limb and the incoming gas from the fresh gas outlet of your anaesthetic machine will go into the patient and inflate the chest. If we then measure that pressure here, we'll see that when the pressure gets to a certain point, we can open that solenoid and allow them to breathe out. So it's a very, very simple automatic thumb. It just uses the incoming fresh gas flow from the anaesthetic machine to operate and to do the cycling uh, in, coupled with the ventilator itself. One thing to note is the very, very modest pressure requirements for this mean that this can easily be run from an oxygen concentrator. So basically we have a T-piece um, and by occluding the T-piece we're able to uh, inflate the chest and and release at a certain pressure. So, so this is a pressure cycled ventilator, okay? Without any other means, you wouldn't know the tidal volume that was delivered to the patient, so we're, we're pressure cycling. As discussed in other videos, the beauty of pressure cycling is that if you want to ventilate something very small and you don't really know the tidal volume that's going to be involved, pressure cycling allows you to deliver a volume at a controlled rate until you get to that, that desired pressure. And so, we at any point avoid overpressure of the lungs. So it's, it's basically a T-piece, and the nice thing about it is that in the situation where the ventilator is off, this is a normal T-piece. To all intents and purposes, this is a normal T-piece. Here's your incoming fresh gas, and normally this would be, um, this part would be connected to the fresh gas outlet of your anaesthetic machine directly to it. At the moment, I've got a little air pump here, just supplying some fresh gas here for the simulation purposes. So here's our incoming gas, here's our patient, here's our exhaust, that's just a normal T-piece. So with the ventilator off, the animal can breathe spontaneously, there's absolutely no hindrance to expiration. This is a completely open valve, um, so we behave in exactly the same way that you would expect a T-piece to behave. When we ventilate, we simply interrupt the flow to create the ventilation. So it's very safe, very easy to use. What we're going to do now is we're just going to set this up and show you on screen the changes that occur and the settings that we need to make to create that ventilation. Okay, so let's see how we actually use the SAV04 in practice. So simply turn it on. Okay, now we have a screen where we're ready to go. Just to briefly explain some of the features of this screen. So off means basically where the ventilator is off. Um, we have a battery level at the top just to show what the battery uh, level is and this uh, little ventilator will run on its battery for about four to six hours which means that it's easy to take it from the you know, theatre to x-ray or for prep room to theatre without having to worry about disconnection of the ventilator. Simply put it on the on the uh, chart or the, the cart that you're taking the animal across the theatre with anyway. So and below that we have a big value 10 and a small value 2. So the 10 is our target inspiratory pressure. So this is our PIP or peak inspiratory pressure that we want to achieve with our patient and this is in centimetres of water. 
and it's controlled by this this knob here. So if I turn this, this will this will change. Now one of the safety features of this product is that if I stop turning it, it flashes, and it's going to go back to the value 10. The reason it did that was because I didn't commit the value change. So if I wanted to change this to 6, I would change this to this point, push it, and now it's committed and it'll stay at 6. Just a safety feature that means that if you do this during an op, you're not actually going to create a massive inflation pressure that you didn't want. So that's going to go back to our 6. So let's put this back to 10. There we are. So what does the 2 mean? Well, the 2 is the expiratory time. So our inspiration is going to be dictated by our inspiratory flow rate and the pressure we wish to achieve. And then once we've got to that pressure, we're going to flip from inspiration to expiration. And expiration is going to last this amount of time. So this is the same, changed in the same manner. So we're going to change this to, say, five seconds. Commit that. And now we've got inspiration to a pressure of 10 centimeters and expiration that lasts for five seconds. You'll see on the screen now, just above it, two things which aren't, aren't um, filled in at the moment, the IT value and the RR value. Because the machine knows the time when the valve is open, it knows the inspiratory time or can measure the inspiratory time. And once we start ventilating, it's going to fill that information in. Having, having worked out what the inspiratory time is, it can then calculate the respiratory rate and, of course, Knowing that as well, it means it knows the expiratory time, and we can display the IE ratio. So once we start ventilating, these values are going to change, and we're going to get a bit more updated information about what the ventilator is doing. So let's just drop this back down to two seconds. We'll set our target pressure at about 10 centimetres. So we've got a very small uh, cat here, so maybe this is a little bit a bit high, so we'll maybe put this down to, to 9 centimetres. So this will be our target pressure. And then we have a couple of indicators here. The green LED is showing that the valve is open. So we're just running as a normal T-piece. As it says there, it's off. As soon as I push this down, we're going to go to red. And we now it says IPPV. And look what's happening. The valve is closing. The pressure is rising. You see the pressure rise on this pressure bar graph. When the pressure bar graph gets to the top, it reaches the 9 centimeters that we've set. The valve then opens, we wait two seconds, and, the, and then the valve closes and the process repeats. So if I change this to three and a half seconds, we've now got a greater delay before the valve closes again. So this is our, how we're controlling our respiratory rate. And if we now look at the screen, we can see that the inspiratory time is 0 0.6 seconds, so that's a very respectable in respiratory time for a smaller, small animal such as this. Um, and on that basis, we've got a respiratory rate of 22. 22 breaths per minute. And our resultant IE ratio is 1 to 3.2. So we've got a, a really nice, simple control pressure cycle ventilation going on here. And to show the effects of pressure cycling, if I were to slightly occlude this, this chest, Inspiratory time is going to drop because it's going to get to pressure faster. So now our inspiratory time is 0.4 and our respiratory rate has gone up correspondingly. But of course, because we are pressure cycling and we're cycling to this pressure and I've occluded the chest, our consequent delivered tidal volume has actually reduced. But the main point is, being a very small animal, that change in compliance of the chest did not result in a in a change in excess pressure because we were targeting the pressure by pressure cycling. And really that's the, that's the whole concept of the SAV04 or the SAV03. We choose a selected target pressure and then we set our flow rate on the anaesthetic machine to achieve our desired inspiratory time. So if we felt that our inspiratory time was too long or too short, we would change our fresh gas flow accordingly until we got to what was an appropriate um, inspiratory time. At the end of the procedure, there's a simple method of weaning the patient from the ventilator. Unlike the Merlin, there's no uh, automatic assist mode, but you would achieve it simply by changing the, the expiratory time, increasing the expiratory time. So we currently have a respiratory rate of 22 breaths per minute. So we'd want to reduce that to maybe half or 
less than, than that to allow the animal to start its own spontaneous breathing. So we would just increase the expiratory time, maybe go to here, an hour is reiterated, 11 breaths per minute compared to the 20 old that we had before. So now we've got a much reduced minute volume. So the animal is going to start to accumulate CO2 um, and that will help to return the spontaneous drive to the, to the animal. This applies to mammals, birds, reptiles, any of your small animals that you're, you're hoping to wean from the ventilator after a period of time. And that, in essence, is, is the SAVO4. It's a very simple ventilator to use, very simple ventilator to control, but allows precise control of pressures to preserve uh, lung tissue and prevent overinflation in those very, very small animals. For further information, please take a look at the website. There are other videos there to help you with things like leak testing and function testing of the SAVO4 or SAVO3. Otherwise, there's further information to be looked at in terms of the articles that are also on the website. But thank you for listening today.